What's up, everybody? Derek Anderson, the DA. All right, check it out. Uh, and Demion had put this post up on X talking about Alan Richardson. I wanted to kind of react to this because you guys know all about the Alan Richardson situation. Uh, he came out in an interview. He made some comments in regards to uh, Trump and Republicans. Uh, he made a comment in regards to uh, police officers saying that cops get away with murder all the time. You know, these gigantic blanket statements talking about people. Um, he also came out against the, Ch- the Catholic Church. You know, he pissed off three groups of people, you know, in one fell swoop. And this is a guy whose career was just on the way up, okay? He was skyrocketing right now after Reacher. Everybody liked Reacher. It got great reviews, not just in season one, but season two. He was in this movie, The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare with Henry Cavill. You know, people were like, yo, man, this guy, he's on the way up, you know? And now you got to look at it in a different light. Uh, and Demian had posted this. Uh, Alan Richardson went from having an easy meal ticket for the rest of his life with Reacher and movie roles to opening his mouth and proving he's a dumbass that hates his audience. That's the main thing. Okay, look, Alan Richardson can have any opinion he wants. I'm not here to talk about what his opinions are. I'm more or less looking at it from the lens of who his audience is. The people that was rocking with Reacher, you know, and the kind of roles that a big old buff dude like this could play. You know, you're thinking about like beat him up, blow him up, shoot him up. I say all the time, like that is my jam. That is what I rocks with, you know. And whereas a person like me, I can kind of like, you know, separate the art from the artist. A lot of people don't do that shit. A lot of people are like, nah, I ain't fucking with this dude. All right. I'm not I'm not going to do it. And so a guy like this, you know, pissing off, especially cops and especially Republicans or people on that side of the aisle who definitely rock with this, you know, kind of no nonsense hero that Jack Reacher was. Big buff, just taking matters into his own hands, taking care of business, taking down evil any way he can. You know, people like kind of vibe with that kind of a hero. That's the kind of stuff people like, you know. So he was pissing off his audience with those statements. And that's really the takeaway from all of this. It's not so much what he said. It's who he was attacking when he said it. Okay. So he goes on and says, uh, this movie absolutely bombed in no small part due to him attacking the audience. A reacher is now cooked, too, unless he apologizes. And he uh, screenshots this headline, MAGA hating Alan Richen bombs at box office, ungentlemanly warfare debuts in fourth place with nine million dollars. So the question is, did he have anything to do with this film bombing at the box office? I wouldn't necessarily say it bombed because I'm not sure what this thing would have did in any regards. But did he cut into the profits of this film how much bread was left on the table because a lot of folks just said you know what like you know his audience all right his core audience the people that would absolutely fucks with this guy's content the people that would have rocked with this guy's content how many of them people dipped out how many of them people said deuces this cat he's dead to me he's dead to me i ain't messing with this dude no more how many of his audience members that loved reacher how many of his audience members decided not to go to this movie? Yeah, you can see right here. This is on uh, Box Office Mojo. This is the weekend numbers. Uh, Civil War, first place, Abigail, uh, and then Godzilla Kong, the new empire. And then the Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare in fourth place. And it's only like two million and change that separate one from four. So Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare easily could have shot up all the way up to number one, in my opinion, if, you know, more people went and saw the film. And you start asking, okay, how much bread did Alan Richson cost this film in its opening weekend and in future weekends? Because how many people are like, nah, I'm not really messing with this. Like, I think Civil War might have cut into some of the profits, maybe, or maybe Godzilla Kong. I don't think Abigail, I think the people that went to watch Abigail were going to watch Abigail regardless. Um, And I think some people said, you know what, I'm not messing with Alan Richson. I'm going to go watch another set of Godzilla Kong, or maybe they're going to watch Ghostbusters or Dune again or something else, Monkey Man. You know, maybe they went to watch something else, or maybe they watched Civil War. But that's the question. How much bread, that's to Endymion's question, how much bread did this cat cost this movie? And in my opinion, I think he did cost them some money. You know, you got to consider this, okay? And this is something that I said, I said this on Twitter as well. We've had all of these examples of people costing the company money with their comments, with their stupidity. They want to get out there. They want to jump on social media and they want to blah, 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 speak out their ass and say some shit or whatever. And they end up attacking the wrong folks. And then people just dip out. They're like, I'm done. I ain't fucking with this no more. All right. You see the 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 uh, fallout from Rachel Zegler's comments when it comes to Snow White. They had to bump the movie back like a whole year to try to deal with some of that shit. 
Oh, no, no, no. It was just strikes. Yeah, bullshit. All right. Y'all could have brought that thing out again. But instead, they said, no, no, no. We got to bump it back because we got to wait for some of this heat to die down. Because Rachel Zegler has a big mouth. And look, one thing happens, then all of a sudden they start digging through the crates. This guy's comments aren't nothing new. Some of his comments that he's made has come all the way back in 2020 and 2021. But what happens is when you have been hiding under the radar, and then all of a sudden you say something stupid, yeah, people start digging through the crates. All right, what else has this guy been saying? And then all of this shit just unearths. Everybody's talking about it. In the meanwhile, you're hurting all of the projects that you're associated with. So the rule, in my opinion, don't piss off your audience, all right? Don't say shit that hates on your audience. Let your audience, whoever your audience happens to be, I don't care if it's a left-leaning left audience or a right-leaning audience, all right? It doesn't matter who they are. Don't piss them off. You know, like Jordan says, Republicans buy tennis shoes too, you know? You got to play it as neutral as possible, man. We playing this right down the line. And we're not going to say anything that pisses off one side or the other. That's how you're supposed to do it. But for some reason, Hollywood hasn't learned this lesson. And yeah, this is a movie that would absolutely benefit from a strong word of mouth. 93% on Rotten Tomatoes from the audience. This is going to get good word of mouth. Uh, this should definitely benefit from this. But you start to wonder, like, all right, but how many people are going to be like, nah, I ain't going to go see that movie. It got that one jerk in it, Alan Richin, who came out here and bashed cops, bashed Trump, bashed Republicans. And a lot of things, you got to remember, a lot of people ain't going to read beyond the headlines and they're not going to dig deep. They're just going to see the top and they don't, oh, I'm out. Okay. I'm out. I'm not messing with this cat. And that's what actors in Hollywood seem to not understand. You're seeing it with uh, Brie Larson coming out there, insulting the audience, the people that actually would go and watch her film, uh, Captain Marvel. We all remember that. Yeah. 40 old year old white men. Like that's your audience, chick. By the way, are you aware of that? That's your audience, all right? 40-year-old white guys are the ones that go to comic book movies, not little 16-year-old girls. They ain't fucking with y'all like that. Like, that's what these dudes just don't get. And the same thing with Alan Richson. Who do you think is watching Reacher, you know? Hell, the, the, the character of Reacher, you know, the cops that get away with murder that he's talking about, like, that's Jack Reacher in a way, right? That's Jack Reacher. He's a cop that's getting away with murder, but he's doing it for a good reason, right? So, you know, I think Alan Richardson said, oh, yeah, it's fine, man. You know, he's on the right side of history or whatever it is. But at the end of the day, like the people that rock with that kind of storytelling, the people that vibe with that kind of a character, you saw all of the stuff coming out about toxic masculinity. Do you think all of the negativity on toxic masculinity was coming from the cops and, you know, people on the right? No, it was coming from the leftists. It was coming from the people that are opposite of those guys. And so the people that was loving it and rocking it, I think like Amazon, it was like the top show watched on Amazon, you know, during that time period. I mean, who do you think those people were? Again, it's it's just like it's befuddling. You know, it's like, how do you not see this? How do you not know who your core audience is? And look, you can you can have any opinions you want. But in my opinion, like one of the major things about being an actor especially in Hollywood, especially with all of the entertainment options available right now, where it's really tough to get eyeballs on a movie or a television show. The main thing is likability. You have to be a likable person and people have to want to tune in and watch you. There's a million things that you can do out here right now from streaming and all the different streaming channels you have. You got video games, you got sports, you got YouTubers that you watch. You got a million and one entertainment options to distract you. You don't need any reason to turn something away or turn something off. Like, I, I'm out from this guy. What you need is people that like, yo, this guy is awesome. I want to support everything he does. Or at the very least, just neutrality. Neutrality is probably the easiest thing to do. If you want to, you know, just, hey, I'm just neutral. I don't say anything about anybody. Not politics, not religion, all right? Nothing like that, especially if the people that rock with the pol political side and everything are the people that are my fans. I'm not going to piss them off. I mean, I don't know, man. To me, it's just a no-brainer, but for some reason, Hollywood just does not learn this lesson. They have been missing this lesson for years and years and years, and it's just, like, hilarious at this point. So I, I, we'll see what happens with um, Alan Rickson again. Um, we'll have to keep our eye on the Ungentlemanly Warfare box office, see if this thing, you know, can do a little bit better. Maybe, maybe it doesn't have a big drop. 
You know, maybe everybody just went to watch Abigail and Civil War again and didn't, you know, really know about this film. A lot of people said it didn't have good uh, trailers or, you know, it didn't have a lot of good marketing. So maybe that's what it is. We'll have to see. But this is a bad sign for this guy's career right now. And, you know, you just have to start to scratch your head and start to wonder, when are these Hollywood actors going to learn their lesson and keep their mouths shut? Anyway, folks, you guys let me know what y'all think about this. Jump down in the comments. Give me your thoughts and opinions on that. Thanks for watching. See you next time.